<clears throat> okay, let's get right into this. I realize I'm late. My apologies. Here's the thing. I could say there were some amazing excuses as to why I'm late. That's not accurate. I was in the shower getting ready for the shows. Bottom line, I was using a brush. It had too much soap on it. I scrubbed my ears too hard. And let me tell you something. If you get bubbly ears on both sides, you're basically terminal at that point. There's no way to fix it. You can't wobble left. You can't wobble right. It's just over. It's just you just pack your bags and you move on with your life. All right, here we go. <clears throat> this is from the Federal Register. I know we always get somebody in the comments who throws a childlike hissy fit uh, that's similar to King Kong. Uh, it's a ruling by the Social Security Administration on 4-11-24, so about a week ago. Expansion of the rental subsidy policy for supplemental security income, SSI applicants, and recipients. This rule will essentially increase a significant amount of SSI recipients who have their benefits reduced from the $943. So what does it do? It increases supplemental security income benefits to the maximum amount of supplemental security income benefits for many people who are not currently getting the maximum amount of supp supplemental security income benefits being $943. So for those people who don't like to have to watch the whole video, I'm telling you what the rule is right up front. It is not a massive across the board $200 increase for everybody. It is not that. What it is, is it is an increase for those who have an ISM deduction. The ISM penalty is the in-kind support and maintenance penalty. It's what screws over SSI people by reducing their benefits up to potentially one third. It sucks. People can't live on $943, yet they use this to reduce their benefits even more. It's what we call a bad deal, and it's what SSI people get. Let's go into it. All right, here we go. Document citation, because you know we're going to get that person in the comments. 89 FR 25507, page 25507 through. Uh, 25514, okay, eight pages, CFR 20, CFR 416, okay, docket number SSA 2023-0010. Cool. Everybody happy? Cool. Let's get to it. All right. There are some fancy phrases and words that you need to know in order to understand this. I'm going to skip all of that. I'm going to read to you what the SSA put, and then I'm going to explain it in English, because what the SSA is good at, when they write their agency rules, choices, decisions, rulings, is they put it into a version of English that is so shitty, most people cannot read it, let alone understand it, because, to be fair, they don't write it as it should be written. And that's fair. That's fair. A lot of attorneys do that. I don't ever do that, because if you want somebody to understand it, you definitely do not write it like this. Let me give you an example. This is the summary of the rule. Now, I'm going to read to you the summary. If you can tell me what the rule is after I read you the summary, and I'm going to give everybody a chance to write it into the comment section. Keep in mind, if I seem a little testy, it's because I started work at around 8.30 today. I finished, okay, around 10.59. So, you know, little, little frisky, little feisty, little saucy. All right, I'm going to read to you the summary rule. You tell me if you understand what the rule change is. We are finalizing our proposed regulation to apply nationwide the in-kind support maintenance rental subsidy exception that has until now been available only for SSI applicants and recipients residing in seven states. This final rule provides that a business arrangement exists such that the SSI applicant or recipient is not considered to be receiving ISM in the form of room or rent. When the amount of monthly required rent for the property equals or exceeds the presumed maximum value. Okay, can anybody, anybody, you tell me in the comments, can anybody tell me what the rule is? Does anybody have any idea from that shit summary what the actual rule is? Anybody? Anybody at all? I'm looking for comments here. I'm seeing a, a no from Giselle. Or is it, no, I see Giselle. No, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Does anybody, all right. So, so basically, no. We're getting no's across the board. Nobody knows what the rule is. And that's the summary they use. 
That's the summary. So, like, if any person was, like, just not knowing how the system works, with blah, 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 if they didn't have a high level of understanding, they would never be able to grasp what the hell's going on. In fact, when I read that the first time, I was like, what the shit is this? I, I had to read it twice to realize the category of what they were trying to do, not what they actually did. All right, let's go through this. Um, I need to find a section that's actually good. Okay, uh, I'm going to skip a, a bunch of their crappery, and I'm just going to give you a basic intro so you know how this rule works, okay? There is an ungodly rule, the one-third reduction rule, also known as the in-kind support maintenance rule, that reduces benefits of SSI recipients, no longer for regular food stuff for the most part, but it reduces benefits if they are receiving shelter, money, like extra money, whatever, from somebody else, okay? That's usually living outside of the household. And when that happens, it sucks because then they're getting 600 and something bucks as opposed to 943 bucks, right? That's the problem, okay? So you take away a third, and I think plus 20 bucks, right? That's, that's the gig. So it's like right around 600-ish, okay? All right, so here we go. Rental subsidy. I'm going to read you this section and then I will explain the rule to you in English. Okay. Our regulations clarify that an individual is not receiving ISM in the form of room or rent if they are paying the monthly required rent charges under a business agreement. Okay. Let me put that in English. And let me just read it. Let me just read part of it again. You could literally cut this entire sentence out. You just you could cut the whole thing out. Our regulations clarify. Why would you even need that at the beginning of an explanation? Just say what it is. An individual is not receiving ISM. They're not getting screwed over where they're taking away one third of their benefits in the form of room or rent. If somebody's given them a place to stay. If they are paying the monthly required rent, if they're given a money for that rent, so if the SSI person is paying them rent, right, charged under a business agreement, okay? So if they have an agreement and they're paying rents, then, you know, for, for some states, they're not supposed to have a reduction in their benefits. That's the basic idea there. Under our general regulatory definition prior to this final rule, a business arrangement existed when the amount of monthly required rent equaled or exceeded the current market rental value, the CMRV. What is the CRMV? It's what you would normally pay to rent that room. Not a disabled person with their buddy going, hey, all right, give me a good price. Not that. It's what, you know, Dale walks up to Bill and says, I want to rent your shitty backdoor crappy apartment and bill is like i will rent it to you but only for this amount that is the amount that is the current market rental value maybe it's a thousand bucks maybe it's 1500 bucks now as you know with inflation everything that was in like the 900 ish territory is now in the 1300 to 1500 dollar territory so just keep that in mind the math no longer works due to inflation when it comes to SSI benefits and the CMRV, which is the current market rental value, because the current market rental value is so extremely bloated from the poorly run inflation situation that it doesn't work with this rule anymore. So as a result, the SSA is changing their policies to make this rule work now going forward, because if everything in the rent is so expensive, they are going to be constantly reducing people's SSI benefits because they're not paying enough towards what it would normally cost to rent that room. Because what it normally costs is way too much now. It's just blindingly just ob obnoxious. Now, with that said, Giselle P., thank you, thank you for the $4.99 donation. I really appreciate that. Let me put the little heart on there. Love the little uh, icon there. Um, what is that? It's like a little like gamer icon with the face. That's awesome. Um, Kathy S. Faith, thank you, thank you for the $9.99 donation. I love the little uh, Japanese uh, little, I guess it would be Red Fox. Red Fox, indeed, indeed. That's awesome, guys. I really appreciate that. 
So here's basically uh, what's happening, okay? Let's go through the basics here so that you can kind of, you know, understand the feeling, okay? So under their general policy, right, the deal is that if they're not paying them enough towards what the rent should actually cost, they'll reduce their benefits by one third or smaller amount. That's that's what they're trying to say over the next couple of sentences. They don't say it well, but that's what they're trying to say. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay. Let me read it again. Under our general regulatory definition prior to this final rule, or put another way, the way it was before this thing got fixed, a business arrangement, you got a contract, you got a deal, existed when the amount of monthly required rent equaled or exceeded the current market rental value. That is the price of rent on the open market in the individual's locality. So if you go and rent something in Tennessee for $800, that makes sense for Tennessee. But if you go to try and rent that same thing in New York City, it would be $5,000, right? That's how it works. California, five grand. Hawaii, at least $33,000. Just at least, okay? At least. All right, cool. Now, with that said, consequently, I'm oh, sorry, to illustrate, if the owner of an apartment would rent that property to any potential tenant for $800 per month, which is, which is funny because there are no more apartments for $800 per month unless you're in a backwater uh, state, you know, for, unless we're talking Mississippi, unless we're talking like, you know, like, you know, backwater state kind of stuff, Louisiana. There's no there's no apartments for rent anywhere for 800 bucks anymore unless you're getting the sweetheart deal. All right. So if the owner of an apartment would rent that property to any potential tenant for eight hundred dollars per month, then the current market rental value, what somebody would actually pay for it, is eight hundred dollars per month. Consequently, I don't know why they throw all these extra words in there, but in this example, if an SSI applicant or recipient agrees to pay the landlord rent in the amount of $800 per month, a business arrangement would exist and the SSI applicant or recipient would not be receiving the punishments of in-kind support maintenance in the form of room or rent. Okay, ISM, in-kind support maintenance, is a punishment. You're not supposed to get all of your SSI benefits if there is the potential where they can take some money away because you aren't paying enough rent towards what it would normally be rented at. Now, the funny part about this, and your brain probably picked it up, uh, Giselle P., thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, hold on, uh, sorry, I got, it's Kevin, Kevin. Thank you, thank you for the $2 donation. I really appreciate it. That's awesome. Uh, I had an apartment in Arizona for $575. And in Colorado for 950. Yeah, but Kevin, where is it at now? Like where are the prices at now? Where where is it at now? All right. Now, some of you are smart. You picked up that there are only maxed out SSI benefits at $943 a month. So how the hell could somebody pay $800 of that for rent alone? Potentially not including the utilities, food bills, etc. It's an impossibility. There's no way it could physically happen. We have reached such extreme inflation that they literally must change SSI so that the poorest of our Americans can still exist in this country. Are they changing the rules heavily for SSDI people and retired people? Shit, no. You know that's not the point. <laughs> you know that. They're not there yet. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Now, let's go back to this. All right, so uh, let's say to illustrate, if uh, somebody wants to rent an apartment that's worth eight hundred bucks, and the claim and the SSI recipient pays eight hundred bucks, they won't take away any money from them. Okay, cool. Now, if an SSI applicant or recipient agrees to pay the landlord rent in the amount of eight hundred per month, everything's cool. But the SSI applicant or recipient in this example would thereby, absent any other countable income or resources, they would receive the full 943 federal benefit rate. Okay, cool. Everything's good there. We've all got that. Now, conversely, if the SSI applicant or recipient agrees to pay the landlord 
less than what it's really worth for that apartment, less than the 800 bucks per month. For example, 400 bucks, right? Because that's, you know, somebody getting $943, they can maybe afford 400 bucks a month in rent, right? Okay. We would impute a difference between the real market value of 800 bucks and the monthly required rent as a punishment of ISM, where they take away your actual benefits. And so what happens is they would say, okay, if you're only paying 400 bucks and it's actually worth 800 bucks, there's a $400 difference there. Now, is that $400 more than one third plus 20 bucks of your SSI benefits, which in 2024 is $334.33? Well, we know if you're paying 400 bucks for an apartment that's normally worth 800 bucks, then there's a $400 difference there. And if that $400 difference is more than $334.33, then they will take away from your benefits $334.33 because it was over that amount. Now, you might be thinking that is moronic. That is inhuman. That is immoral. And you would be correct. You would be absolutely correct. In this example, the landlord agrees to accept a rent of $400 per month instead of the $800 that it's actually worth. The rental subsidy amount is $400. So the landlord is subsidizing that SSI person for $400. However, the PMV right? Which is, it's just a fancy way of saying one third of your SSI benefits, right? It's $334.33 in 2024. So only $314.33 would be counted as ISM after we subtract the $20 general income exclusion. Oh yeah, my apologies. It's a $20 income exclusion, right? It's not going to hurt you. It's an income exclusion. Okay. All right, after we subtract the $20 general income exclusion from the $334.33 and assuming there is no other income, right? So the SSI person isn't earning more income anywhere. They're not being subsidized by somebody else with their living accommodations. Consequently, I feel like they've used consequently and conversely way, way too many times already throughout this document. But again, consequently, in this example, the SSI recipient would receive in benefits only $628.67 as a monthly payment in 2024. The 2024 full benefit rate for SSI benefits would normally be $943. But because that landlord subsidized $400, because they, right, it's worth $800 for a rental. It was $400 that the SSI person is paying. So they're subsidizing them for 400 bucks, and that 400 bucks is worth more than 334.33, which is one third of your SSI benefits. So then they punish you. They take away one third of your benefits, being 628 dollars and 67 cents remaining. So you take away a third, and all you're getting is 628 bucks. All right. So what do you need to know? What they do is. They right. They take their three hundred thirty-four dollars and thirty-three cents. They subtract the twenty buckaroos. You're left with three hundred fourteen dollars and thirty-three cents, and they punish you with taking away that from your nine hundred forty-three dollars, which puts you at six hundred twenty-eight dollars and sixty-seven cents. That will become your new SSI monthly rate. Now, everybody at the SSA agreed that this was a shit rule, and everybody in the government agreed, for the most part although there were some Republican hangouts, right? You know, the Republicans, they're all about like, you know, capitalism. Republicans are not big fans of SSI. You know, everybody knows that. We all got that. We all know that, okay? And with that said, not, not that the Republicans are wrong with a lot of this stuff. You know, remember, none of this stuff happens or works unless we have strong capitalism because these are first world programs. If we don't have better economy going on in the future, then we can't have any of these programs. Like a lot of you are like, it'll never happen. We're 34 trillion in debt. We don't have the money to even pay off the, the, the bills that were due every single month on the interest we have to pay for what we've borrowed. 
It could collapse. It literally could collapse. All right. Now, here's the exception. I'm going to explain it in simple terms because I don't want to spend a bunch of time reading this because I, I feel like this chair is going to break on me. I can feel it already going. I've got to, I've got to work on it. I just haven't had time. Exception. Following court cases, blah, 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 Seventh Circuit, yada, yada. There were certain states that said, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't want to reduce their benefits when this happens. We don't want to do it. We don't want to reduce their benefits. We still want them to get a little bit of a deal. And as a result of that, you know, they're getting subsidized a little bit. And as a result of that, we want them to be able to keep their $943. April, thank you for the $5 donation. Thank you, thank you. The doggies are actually in the other room. They're actually eating doggy bones right now, which is excellent. Um, they love those um, chicken thingies, the uh, the salted chicken, uh, dried out chicken. They absolutely love those. All right, so let me read it to you here. Let me give you some of the basics, okay? Second Circuit, an acquiescence ruling, the residents of Texas in a program option, uh, operation manual system notation. Uh, basically, residents of these seven exempted states, Connecticut, New York, Vermont, Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, and Texas, a business arrangement exists when the monthly required rent equals or exceeds the PMB. So we're talking the $334.33. Okay. So a business agreement exists. Okay. When the monthly required rent equals the 334 bucks instead of the actual market value of renting that apartment. Let me explain to you why this is important, because if you get this, you'll realize why this is such a massive increase for so many SSI people, SSI supplemental security income. In these states, there was a ruling, Seventh Circuit, where they said, all right, things are not good in the economy. You know, things are bad. Yeah, you know, things are torrential. Well, we're having we're having hearings in Congress right now, literally, trying to figure out if we should file suit against the people in charge of our economic policy because maybe they have inten intentionally flogged our system to the point where people just can't afford basics. That's where we're at as an economy. Now, of course, you guys saw the Senate and how they were voting with things, et cetera. And the Senate is controlled by Democrats, so they're not going to throw their people under the bus. But the bottom line is the economy is extra, extra salty right now. Okay, A lot of bitter tears in it. Now, with that said, these states came through, Connecticut, New York, Vermont, Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Texas. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. If they've got a business agreement, we don't care. We don't care. We do not care if that apartment would normally rent for $2,000. We don't care. We don't. We only care if they are paying $334 in rent, $334.33 in rent, or more. So all of you need to memorize this. Going forward. This is like the most important part of the video. So if you want to like pay attention and be like, oh, I'm awake now. This is the most important, important part of the video. The way that you play the game now going forward, if you're an SSI recipient, is that you always pay at least $334.33 in rent going forward. To be safe, put it at $334.34. Because then what will happen is they will not reduce your benefits by using in-kind support and maintenance rules, which slice a third away from you. So once again, if you want to increase your benefits to the full maximum SSI amount, you have to show that you're paying in rent $334.33. That's what you should learn from this video. Okay, cool. Now, what is the proposed rule? And then it's just, it's literally, it's all these paragraphs. They could have summed it up in like two sentences. Consistent with the Social Security Administration Agency Strategic Plan for fiscal years 2022 to 2026, and with the stated goal of simplifying the SSI program, advancing equality, and promoting uniform treatment of rental assistance, we published a notice of proposed rulemaking in the NPRM and the Federal Register on August 24, 2023, entitled Expansion of the Rental Subsidy Policy for Supplemental Security Income Applicants and Recipients. They could have literally erased all of that. They could have literally erased that entire introductory sentence. They could have put that in the back. This is why I get so angry with the SSA when they, when they write up their rules 
in preparation. None of this is prepared in a way that somebody with a 12th grade education could understand what's going on. You know, we're going to skip all that shit. Let's just, we're skipping it. We're skipping it. Under the proposed rule, all SSI applicants and recipients would be held to the same standard, that is, a business agreement exists, and the applicant or recipient is not considered receiving ISM in the form of room or rent if the applicant or recipient has a monthly required rent equal to or exceeding the PMB. Let me just spell it out. We're going to skip all this Section 205 crap, 702 crap, 1631 crap. We're skipping all that shit. All you need to know going forward is that you have to show that you are paying in rent, okay, $334.33 to receive your maximum SSI amount of benefits. That's the game. That's the new rule. So you will see a chunk of SSI people increasing their benefits by anywhere between 0 to $334.33, which I, I understand to many of you is chicken shit. I get that. I totally understand it. I fully comprehend it. I get it. But to people who are used to getting less than $1,000 a month, $334 is a huge mega deal. It's a massive increase. Why does this rule exist? Why did the change occur? It didn't originally really exist as much because of the economy's inflation, but then it became more and more obvious when they were doing the sessions where people got to comment that the economy had made it impossible for SSI people to live in America. Like retired people are going through, like SSDI people are going through, widows, survivors, etc. The point I'm getting at with this before we go to the next video, and I think it's very clear and very common and should be understand in a crystal clear format. If they make America any more expensive to live in, all the social security programs for the most part fail. Why? If you have retired people that are relying on SSI benefits, then the retirement program has failed its purpose. We have millions of people having to have concurrent allowances where their retirement or disability benefits are not enough and and they have to boost them with SSI benefits. Does this rule apply to those people? Sometimes it does. Is this a situation where America has now become so expensive to live in that it has made Social Security benefits to some degree not worth it? Well, I was speaking with a younger person today, and he was telling me about all these plans he had for his future. And none of them included a 401k, a pension, or relying on Social Security benefits. And the reason why that is, is that if inflation continues at 2% a year, Social Security benefits fail. You know why? Because my generation can't get enough high-paying jobs to pay for boomers. It fails. It literally fails because of that. And the number one number, and I've said it before, that you should all be aware of, that's the most important number to follow when it comes to the success of Social Security benefits year after year going forward, is how many people are paying in versus how many are receiving. It's around a 2.7 to 2.8 of people paying in to each person receiving. We know around 2033, it's going to be around a 2 to 1 ratio. At a 2 to 1 ratio, it begins to collapse. When it collapses, we won't have enough money to pay the retired because it starts off with the trust funds failing. Then it goes into not enough millennials having high enough paying jobs to be taxed enough. So there's not enough of them working and the jobs that they have aren't high paying enough. So then those benefits that are left continue to erode even more. So now you're receiving 25% less than you should have gotten, 26% less than you should have gotten, 27% less till you're at 30, 31, 32. That is what we're facing. So is it a massive increase for those who are having reduced SSI benefits? Yeah, it's 334 bucks. That's huge. Is this a fix that had to be done because inflation has destroyed the SSI person's ability to go ahead and march forward with their life? Yeah, it has. Is this a problem where these benefit programs 
are becoming not worth what they're worth for us to pay for them. It is. So what's the fix? We have to give Americans a private right to Social Security benefits so that they can have attorneys sue the federal government to put enough money into the Social Security trust funds to keep them solvent. They sure as shit can print a lot of money for Ukraine, and they sure as shit can print a lot of money for Israel, and they sure as shit can print a lot of money for immigration. But how much are they printing for your future that you already paid for? Since you have no legal right to your retirement benefits and disability benefits because they are a tax, which you'll get somebody in the comments saying, I paid for it, I have a legal right. You don't. Just go read the 1937 Supreme Court ruling. But the point is, the point is, and this is what's important. This is what's important, okay? If you don't have a legal right to these benefits, you cannot sue them about giving you less and less and less and a shittier deal each year. If you give people, Americans, a private right to their Social Security benefits, attorneys can sue the government, recover massive class action lawsuits against them, and that will fix our problem and get it rolling in the right direction. Guys, I will catch you at the next video. I will catch you at the next video. Um, let's see what's going on here. Um, all right. So with that said, um, I can't read all the comments cause they're really, really tiny. I can really only see the big ones that pop up. So, uh, here's the deal. Please remember to like, and subscribe. You don't like, and subscribe. Bottom line is you won't get to see these videos and changes in the future. Number two, head over to Google. If you can go to disability resolution in Google, disability resolution, Florida, disability Resol resolution law firm, throw some stars up on the board. I always appreciate waking up to those final detail. Thursday nights, Tuesday nights, and Thursday nights. This chair is going to crack on me. I can feel it starting to break. I go live. I'm going live later and later each time because I'm just running out of time to do all the law firm work. Okay. Because as you know, I'm a practicing disability attorney, probably one of the, if not the most popular social security disability firm, at least in my area. Okay. So I, I'm the most viewed and subscribed to disability attorneys. So, you know, it's probably true to some degree with that. Now, with that said, with that said, okay, just keeping that all in mind. When you have a question, a quick question, don't call the firm if you already have benefits. Call during the live sessions, Tuesday and Thursday. I'm going to do one more video, and then I'm going to go live and answer some questions. You call the 407-279-1754 number. But the staff at the firm are ready to end my life <laughs> because so many people call in with a quick question. There's no such thing as a quick question. I answer it. You got five more questions. If you're seeking benefits, call the law firm. If you're trying to go to a hearing, call the law firm. If you need more than five minutes during the live sessions, we have an hour thing. You can buy an hour. We put you on my hearing calendar. You become a hearing where I just spend an hour with you going through whatever your questions are. Okay. I will catch you a little bit later. I will see you at the next video, which will be essentially the president of the Social Security Administration's state of the agency. I will catch you for that video in about 10 minutes. See you all there and see you soon. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.